We're extremely honoured to be joined now by Reggie, drummer and founder member of the band. Reg, is this band not just another in the list of one-hit wonders? Well, more or less, yes, because um, I don't last long in anything I do. It was here in Wales during the early 60s that the rock phenomena that was to become the Plastic Bucket Band began. In February 1963, Johnny Glutton, a ukulele player and part-time worker, bumped into a man who was to change the course of his life. A man he'd never seen or met before, ever. His next-door neighbour, Reggie. They crashed into each other at the bottom of their street, and after a short scuffle, Johnny found out about Reggie's skiffle band. Well, I had this skiffle group called Plastic Boggy. They were looking for a singer, so I wrote out an advert to take to the local paper, gets in my car, and boom! I crash into this bloke claiming to be my neighbour. He starts beating me up, and all of a sudden, the adverts fall out of Reggie's pocket. He stops hitting him, picks up the adverts, and says, I'll be your singer, and of course, he said, OK. Well, we got ourselves together. We called ourselves the Mop Tops, because it was the fashion at the time, you know. And uh, Reggie had this friend called Joe, who owned a nightclub in town. He never heard of us before, but agreed to give us a regular spot at his nightclub, just through knowing Reggie. turned up on the first night and Reggie had told me they were a skiffle group so I thought okay and then they started playing and I'm not kidding you they played hard rock and roll all night and they were bloody off earth. Awful or not the band soon released their first album Meet the Mop Tops. Hi girls People call me Johnny, but I sometimes feel I'm being used. But anyway, I play lead guitar and I'm the singer in the band. I'm Stanley and I play the keyboard and uh, I like the plastic fucking band. Hi, I'm Amy Love Station and I play this. What is this? Uh, what's the... I'm Reggie, I used to muck about with tin cans and dustbin lids. And one day in the park I found a proper drum and I've never looked back since. And we're the Mock Christmas cards, 
Things were going swell for the Mop Tops, that is, until they met the Queen. Well, what can I say, uh, we were doing, the, the Fab Five were doing absolutely fantastic. We had the, we did the Royal Variety performance, didn't we, and we had to meet the Queen, and just as Lathan shook the Queen's hand, he fired it. Of course, we were banned from every concert after that, banned from everywhere. Then we got another gig, absolutely disgusting. Determined not to end their music career so soon, the band laid low for a while and spent that time working on solo projects. Johnny returned to his roots and embarked on a tour of the Theatres of Wales with his one-man show, performing the music of Frank Sinatra on ukulele. AD put on his movie director's hat and made the gritty wartime drama Full Metal Bucket in which both Stan and Reg had small acting roles. Reggie also found time to release a solo album called Let There Be Drummers. The album featured just one song, which was a 93 minute drum solo. Although poorly received by the public, immediately after making the album, Reggie found himself in the Guinness Book of Records for the longest ever drum solo, and he found himself in hospital for three weeks with dehydration. With the press now off their case, the Mop Tops came back together and began working on a new collection of songs celebrating those early days gigging at Joe's nightclub and giving an insight into the styles of music you would hear and the people you were likely to meet. They changed their name to the Phantom Singer and the Plastic Bucket Band. They changed their image. And sometimes they even wore buckets on their heads. But sure enough, by the end of 1968, they released the masterpiece of the 1960s, Joe's Jazz Club. I met her at a party while I talked to my friend Joe, who wore a sign. To the crowd I saw a runway, so I descended nice and slow, who wore a flight. And I said, I've seen you here before She 
She said her name was Ruby. She's the singer from the show. What a name! Whoops, she said, "Yours truly next. I really have to go." Oh, what a shame! There goes Ruby Robinson, acting like she's a natural, but she's going nowhere. She's going nowhere. She's going nowhere. first concept album and so much so that even the record itself was in the shape of a large admittance ticket which proved a little tricky to play but for those few that managed it was well worth it Yeah. 
There once was a time when a raster's life spent staring at the skies above. Now the ale is fine as we wine and dine to the music at Joe's Jazz Club. We got Reggie on the bongo. Joe's Jazz Club went on to be the band's highest grossing album to date, so the band decided to use this extra money to fund the making of an animated fantasy film called Floaty Boaty Afternoon. Scary night. I had dreams of all sorts. I dreamt of all the bands in the past and cheap old film units and I've been asked to take part in the latest one but I have been paid at all for the others I've done and I'm waiting for the cheque in the post. Is that true? Yeah. I can't believe that. It's true. I, I stand here. Adrian Griffiths. Has, has made millions out of these films he's, made, he's done. Well, I don't know where he's put the bloody money, John, because I didn't get him. <laughs> I didn't get a lot. I was just a cameraman, but... Well, there you go. Uh, and the same, we, going back with all the bands we've done, and Challenge and all that, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't last long in any one of them. <laughs> but I can't, I so, can't believe you agreed to do this latest project, this cartoon project. Oh, well, I read Because you had no money. No. I've read the script and I'm a bit dubious because I haven't paid for the others. So I said I'll do it. I was glad to have words with him, Reg. Yeah, hoping that, uh, oh, bloody hell, I'll go all about Reg. He, he, he has think. literally made made a, a few bob out of these films well, he's done. Well, it's gone the wrong way then. And he never paid me for my camera work. Really? No. His father? That's right, yeah. Oh, that's unbelievable. It, you must be able to, you know, sort that out. I don't know, I still have words with him when you get back. You come all the way down here and we, we've got another one now. All the work, you, you've sat there for hours reading the script. And I have, right. I, I've studied it and I've tried to get in the frame of AD's mind, but I was trying to put music to it. Look. Yeah, yeah. The, the, and you the, shouldn't, you shouldn't. Yeah. And you, like you say, you, you rehearse and things and you, you don't want to read it as read. That's you right, you, you've emphasis. got to put the emphasis it's in the It's like the poetry, it? And I've spent all this money on this recorder, voice recorder, yep. uh, which cost me an arm and a leg, just to come down and get your voice. I noticed you were walking funny. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice that, honestly, walking funny. Yeah. Arm and a leg, I mean, you know. Arm I mean, and a leg, uh, Had a scary dream last night, just to set the scene all right. The water to my window rose, without me knowing, without me knowing. So I crawled in the bathtub, called out your name, love, and set sail to find the safety of dry land again. Blue days, yellow mornings. Blue days, yellow mornings. Blue days, yellow mornings. And a boaty, boaty afternoon. So then I was a-sailing in my clean plastic bottle But the good thing about plastic is it never does decay 
So I wasn't worried, no I wasn't worried Between skies of blue and water too I sailed the days away Blue days, yellow mornings Blue days, yellow mornings Blue days, yellow mornings For 40 days and 40 nights I sail the ocean For 40 days and 40 nights I sail the sea Where nothing flew and nothing swam there were no motion What a predicament, what fate awaited me Just blue days And floaty battle of afternoons Anyway the dream lasted a long time Anyway the dream lasted most of that night but I wasn't worried, no, I wasn't worried, no, I wasn't worried. I was back on my first line. Blue days, yellow mornings. Blue days, yellow mornings. Blue days, yellow mornings. And the boaty, boaty afternoons. Blue days, yellow mornings. Blue days, yellow mornings. Blue days, yellow mornings, and floaty boaty afternoons. <laughs> Scales are coming up. I'm with him. He's ugly. I'm still going. And smelling. Now I'm on the telly. It seemed that the whole royal blowing off incident was firmly behind them, as their next album, The Magical Bucket Tour, charted straight in at number one where it remained for an entire lunchtime before the tabloids noticed the similarities between the Bucket Band and the Mop Tops. Well, you continue to dispel these rumours that you're really the Mop Tops as nonsense. Why don't you prove it and just give me your real name? Don't tell him, Reg! The Phantom denied all charges and announced that they will be wearing their buckets permanently from now on.
This was to be their last album together, for shortly after, the Phantom quite literally kicked the buckets. Well, he, he called us up and uh, he said, I'm not coming back. I'm going to start my own dance band. And, of course, we tried to talk him out of it. No, no. But, uh, we didn't. We only sort off, if you remember. Did we? <laughs> the Phantom started work on his debut solo album, Bucket. And for his first single, I'm a Bleeder, he did something quite incredible. I took a small tape recorder, went round to Reggie's house. Well, I beat the crap out of him, went back to the studio and used the samples of the fight on my new song, and it was literally a, a big hit. So, uh, why did you do it? Was it a vengeance attack? <laughs> Nothing like that, no, just did it for the publicity. The Plastic Buckets, now deeply into hippie Indian music, released a reply song entitled Reggie Slept With Your Mum in 1965, Part 1. Reggie even invited the Phantom round to this video shoot, so they could really hurt his feelings. But he just seemed to enjoy it. Well, it's now nearly 30 years since the band went their separate ways. And to celebrate the occasion, the band have reformed to make a spectacular new album in this very studio. It must be hard after so long to just patch up differences, but we've been assured that the band are getting on as well as ever. And we're hoping to catch them for a chat shortly. So, Avi, is this a new song you're working on? No, no, um, I'm just a bit stressed. See, I always play this when I'm worried. Helps me relax and, uh... The more worried I get, the faster I play. <laughs> so why are you so worried? Hang on, hold it. Can we read outside? <clears throat> we had a fax from our record company this morning saying if we don't release a hit single by next month, they'll stop funding, our, fun, funding for our new album. This would mean no comeback to her, no album, Basically, we'll be dropped from the record label. Not good news, really, if you look at it like that. We had a band meeting last night, and we discussed what type of songs seem to dominate the charts these days. And we all agreed, it's duets. Everybody's doing it. Tom Jones with the study of phonics. George Michael with Whitney Houston. So I thought it would be the coolest hippie star we could record a song with. And there's only one man for us. The main man. Are you sure this is the place? Yeah. Look, it says here yeah, in the farm book. B white. Number 10. Yeah, but this is the third one we've tried. Well, just drive up to the end there. That'd be a bloody ride, right, eh? It's atrocious, this is. Does Mr. White live here? He must be the bucket man. He's been expecting you. Ah, brilliant. I'm Maxine, Barry's bouncer. You're a bouncer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Come in. Right. <laughs> I 
Nearly 30 years, and with a little help from their friend, the Fab Five are back at the top of the hit parade and rubbing shoulders with the elite of the celebrity world. Well, 
Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for inviting us along tonight. Um, before we start out with our music, uh, is there any questions from the audience? Well, you're coming up 50 years in the business. There's some amazing things happened to you in those 50 years. Is there just one thing that you could pick out that say is, is the most momentous thing that will stay with you forever? It hasn't quite been 50 years, but... <laughs> Hello. No, I'm on the telly. No, you're not smelly. I'm on the telly. <laughs> coffee. Yeah, coffee and milk. Okay, coffee and milk, yeah. Okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> so, any, any more questions? I want to ask you one question, be quite honest. Yeah. Uh, how did you feel uh, when you were standing in front of the Queen? Were you uh, a bit nervous? Um, actually, it went really well. She enjoyed our music, uh, but unfortunately, Lathan farted and uh, had good pay to it all. Uh, we were arrested on the spot. Um... <laughs> Phantom, you always were a band to push boundaries. People would always look forward to your next album. But we're in the 90s now, so tell me, what name have you given to the hip style of music on this new album? Line dancing. <laughs> I talk to my guitar when I feel lonely and I swear at times it talks on back to me We talk about the good times we both spend together Making country music in sweet harmony Everywhere I go he's going with me And he stay right with me till my dying day Cause he made me what I am Just a guitar and a man Making music country Music every day. He's more than just a plaything, now I know him. He's a comfort and a real good friend of mine. If you take him away, there'd be nothing left to say. We just gotta be together all the time. Everywhere I go, he's going with me. And he stay right with me till my dying day Cause he made me what I am Just a guitar and a man Making music, country music every day Stay right with me till my dying day Cause he made me what I am Just a guitar and a man Making music, country music every day Yes, he made me what I am Just a guitar and a man Making music, country music every day Yes, he made me what I am Just a guitar and a man Making music, country music Every day So, with the album released and sitting pretty at the top of the charts, we caught up with the band one last time as they hang up their buckets, throw in the towels, and bugger off to spend all their money. Johnny Glutton now spends his days soaking up the sun in one of his 39 holiday homes around the world. He often invites the rest of the band to his legendary cocktail parties, but none of them ever turn up. Stanley Sticklebrick opened his own rave club in Ibiza, 
and can still be seen entertaining the crowd every Tuesday and Thursday night. Reggie and his production team released a children's TV show called The Fatty Bellies, but he was later arrested on charges of taking strange substances. Lathan, meanwhile, brought out his own range of fine wines and appointed himself chief tester. And finally, AD Love Station married Barry White's bouncer, Maxime Gobble a lot, and he hasn't left his bedroom ever since. It was the face that I 